Hi, it's Dwyer. Let's talk lightweight division. Let's talk Keyshawn Davis versus Gus Lemos. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's start with Keyshawn Davis. You've heard the big names at 135, right? His good friend, Shakur Stevenson. The two men have vowed not to fight each other. I think that's a great decision simply because uh, boxing's a sport. You know, the mental scarring that takes place when you fight a guy who is practically a member of your family, to me, is hard to undo, right? That's why, you know, I'm actually grateful that Vitaly Klitschko did not fight his little brother, Vladimir Klitschko, right? You also have Gravante Davis at 135 pounds. You also have Lomachenko at 135 pounds, right? Navarrete, who I understand is dropping down and wait for a fight, he's been at 135. William Zapata has been at 135. Right now, just understand with all those big names, I'm not convinced that any of them is more talented than Keyshawn Davis, right? Davis is one of those guys who I have in my pocket where I think to myself, wow, you know, this is what's real. Don't get me wrong. Zapata would give him a hard fight because Zapata is a southpaw and Zapata is high volume. But Davis is one of the best counter punchers in the entire sport. This is a Richard Torres situation. Torres is the heavyweight who I believe is ready to challenge the big guys, but who doesn't have that many fights. Nor does Keyshawn Davis. Don't go by the number of fights. Go by the skill set. Let me also say too that Jose Pedraza is a fighter I think very highly of. Davis beat him. I believe Pedraza is one of the ultimate litmus tests in boxing. Let me point out, too, that Gervonta Davis beat him as well, right? Well, let me just say the odds makers are all over Davis. Spectacular counterpuncher, spectacular boxer, has his timing down, might be privately troubled had a long time stomach problem that people really couldn't properly diagnose. Then, of course, he decided to give up marijuana and believe it or not, his stomach problem went away. Right now, that's all recent. He's also found God, according to reports. When you see someone like this, just understand there's a lot going on in the background. In fact, the minute you hear things like a mystery stomach problem, just like you heard Mike Tyson had an ulcer flare-up that led to the delay of his fight against Jake Paul, right? The minute you hear things like that, you need to consider the idea that you don't quite know what's going on. I don't quite know what's going on with Davis, who's in his mid-20s. Let's just say... He has a lot going on, right? He's fighting a guy most people haven't heard about, and it's a little bit shocking here. He's fighting Gus Lemos. Now, the reason it's shocking is Lemos, believe it or not, was in title contention at 140. Now, five pounds might not sound like a lot to heavyweights. It's a hell of a lot when you're talking about the difference between 135 and and 140, right? Lemos's last fight was against Richardson Hitchens, another fighter you need to keep track of. That fight went 12 rounds, 12. Just understand that two of the judges had that fight 115 for Richardson Hitchens, 113 for Gus Lemos. 
Now looking at Keyshawn Davis, who's 5'9", just understand the type of fighter who would give him a hard time as I see it would be a shorter guy who can bend at the waist. In other words, take away his body as a target for Keyshawn Davis, who is high volume, who's not going to respect Davis's suddenness and the hesitancy that other opponents, including rough and tumble opponents, have shown in terms of diving in the pocket with Davis. In other words, Davis is such a good counterpuncher that guys are afraid to try to smother him. I believe Lemos is going to smother him. Not try. He's going to smother him. This is the guy who is not worried about his feet. He's not worried about boxing etiquette. He's not worried about reputations. He himself has a greater than 60% KO ratio. I believe his life has been spent being the shorter guy, bending at the waist, coming in, and throwing hooks. Now this fight has an added dynamic. Norfolk, Virginia. That's where Keyshawn's from. That's his backyard. That's where this fight is happening. Right, so I believe a lot's happening here, man. I believe Keyshawn's going to have a lot on his plate. Let me just say, you give up marijuana, you find God, you run into your old friends, they're going to look at you, they're going to be like, hey, player, are you okay? You know, hey, hey, Keyshawn, are you still there? Right, you give up your bad habits, you think your friends are all going to give up their bad habits? Let me also say, too, you have an entire school of thought out there. We'll call it the Azuma Nelson School of Thought, where guys didn't mind fighting in the other guy's backyard because they didn't want the pressure of fighting at home and dealing with everyone they know, friends and family and friends of friends, wanting tickets. They didn't want to deal with the local paper asking them questions. They didn't want to deal with the pressure of being the hometown fighter. Keyshawn is going to deal with all that pressure here. And as I see it, he's going up against an underrated opponent. That 115, 113 times 2, the other judge had it 117, 111. Gus Lemos losing to Richardson Hitchens. Understand, Hitchens is one of the very best, in my eyes, my private rating, at 140 pounds. Understand, that is Lemos's only loss. As we hear about fighters like Navarrete, like Gervonta Davis, right, like Zapata, just understand, you have other fighters who fully believe in themselves, who might have no losses, might have one loss. And that loss might be to another underrated fighter. I believe that's the case here. How overlooked is Gus Lemos? Folks, you know I think it's a joke. When it's a competitive fight and a guy is given less than a plus 150. In other words, less than a 40% chance of winning the fight. That's a plus 150. You're getting a plus 400 here on Gus Lemos. Right? Understand, he's going to come in low. He's going to come in with high volume. How is Keyshawn going to discourage him in the early rounds? He's also not going to buy the hype. He believes he's the best. He's from Argentina. He's a big man in Argentina. Right? He comes to the United States against Hitchens. He went for it. Hitchens is lucky that he had a great jab and length. Right? Hitchin knows how to use his height and reach better 
than Keyshawn Davis. And even with Hitchens' great jab, height, lean, that fight went 12 rounds. So let me just be blunt here. The only bet I've seen, because this fight's not taking place until November 8th, the only bet I've seen, uh, if you go to Odds Checker right now, you're going to see some shops have Lemos as high as a greater than 5 to 1 underdog. But in the main shops, he's a 4 to 1 underdog. The only bet I've seen is a money line bet where Davis is going off at a plus 600 and higher. And Lemos is going off at a plus 400 and higher. They haven't yet posted the over under. The bet I like is to take the underdog here, Lemos. And keep in mind, I feel that Davis is a major talent in the sport, right? I would put Davis probably in my top 12 in the entire sport pound for pound. The bet I like is Lemos based on styles, right? Not abstract talent, but styles. The fact that this guy's going to get low, he's going to get inside, he's going to get underneath. He's going to force a firefight. The fact that Keyshawn, fighting at home, might not have the mindset of being on his back foot, letting the shorter guy dictate while he's choosing jabs and long counters. Right? He's fighting in front of his friends. He wants to make an impression. He doesn't want to look completely back foot in front of his hometown. Right? So I like Lemos, plus 400. Hedged with, and here's where we have to speculate. Here's where you're going to have to be at the mercy of the casino. Right? Keep in mind, Davis is a better than minus 600. They're telling you that if these guys fight seven times, Davis wins six of the seven. If the over-under is eight rounds, the hedge would be the over eight rounds. While Davis has power, understand, Lemos is not going to be discouraged. Let's talk about the further risk, though. This is the big question in the fight. Lemos, 5'5 five, five and a half to Davis's 5'9, just fought at 140 pounds. He's losing the 5 pounds to fight at 135. Is he still going to have the punch resistance? Folks, that's the big question. That's the problem with losing weight. Understand, too, if you lose the weight and make the weigh in, and then you rehydrate, when you're younger, and Lemos is 28, when you're younger, your body can you know, adjust better. Right? But understand, even then, even then, in my opinion, you're not 100%. I'm speculating here. There's risk involved in this bet. I like the over eight rounds. Hedged with Lemos at a plus 400. I'm speculating that Lemos is going to come in with the punch resistance he just had at 140 against Richardson Hitchens. Right? Understand, that fight's not a one-off. His fight before that was at 140. Right here they have him in Davis's backyard fighting five pounds lighter. Now let's talk about that over-under because the eight rounds, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm assuming when a guy has something like seven KOs in 11 fights, which is what Davis has, and is a six to one favorite, which is what Davis is. I'm guessing they are going to have the over-under at around eight rounds. If they don't, 
if someone at the casino has seen the Richardson Hitchens Gus Lemos fight and they jack it up to nine or nine and a half rounds then what I'm going to do personally and I should have the money to do it since the Lemo side of the play is far greater than even money. In other words, you're going to structure the bet so you can win if any of these options happen. I'm going to buy a round. In other words, if they make the over under nine rounds, I'm going to buy the eighth round. Right? You can, you can buy the eighth round. You already have Lemos covered for you know, rain, sunshine, storm, right? That's a plus 400. That's in the bank. When I say by the eighth round, if they offer you the prop, Keyshawn to win by eighth round knockout, which would be outsized because you're picking one round out of several. One guy to win the round. I'm going to buy the eighth round. Right? The point is, I like the over eight, excuse me, I'm going to buy the ninth round if they make the over under something higher, right? I like the over eight rounds as the hedge. This is a swing for the fences play here. Gus Lemos plus 400, right? The goal here is to at least break even if the fight goes over while taking a swing at a guy who has the perfect style, and I mean the perfect style, to give Keyshawn Davis problems, right? And recognize Keyshawn Davis has been in the ring sparring privately with Terrence Crawford, right? He's that level of talent, right? He's the real deal. The casinos think so. I just think style-wise, this is a tough matchup. Those are my thoughts. Limo, simply to win, plus 400, hedged with the over eight rounds. Right? Play with the over-under if they make it higher. Let me hear from you. I hope you uh, leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.